learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So today, I thought I'd uh, spend some time answering some questions that have come recently. I, I don't get to answer questions as much as I used to. Just been so busy trying to get the place ready for us to live on, and it seems like a never-ending story that we're always doing something. So I don't get a lot of time to spend analyzing questions and comments and taking the time to actually figure out a good answer. So it appears that we got a big storm coming our way. It's gonna be all day tomorrow. I think it's a tropical storm coming, and that's amazing. It's coming all the way up here to Missouri, and it's gonna go through into, I guess, Iowa and Wisconsin and up into Canada. And so we're supposed to have some serious winds. So one person was kind of concerned about our camper flipping over. Of course, right now we're temporarily living in our homemade truck camper. We took it off our truck after we uh, stopped our nomadic lifestyle and laid and set it on the ground, put a base on it until we get our tiny house built. So far, we've done pretty good. We had 60 mile an hour winds the other day. What I did was I took two fence posts and I drove them down the side of the camper. And then I put a strap over the camper. And then I ratcheted the strap to the fence post, holds it down really well. I don't feel the wind knocking us around. As a matter of fact, I got tarps around the front. You can feel the tarps bouncing around, but as far as the wind hitting the camper, you can't feel that at all. So I'm pretty confident that we've got that tacked down pretty good now. Of course, if there's a tornado coming, uh, we'll go to the storm shelter. Now, as far as electricity and water and all that, of course, that doesn't affect us at all. We have solar panels. Now, if the wind were to do something or we had hail damage to the solar panels, I could still run the generator and do the same thing. I can just hook up to the generator, charge the batteries. Now, with the generator, you got to have gasoline, so you have a limited amount of time you can spend on the generator. With the solar panels, though, you have an unlimited amount of time. With water, we have the well. We run the well pump off the generator and fill the IBC tank. It only takes about an hour to fill it from halfway empty. And that's because I throttle it down a little bit. I mean, I could throttle it way up and have it done in 10 minutes. And then when the IBC tank's uh, topped off, then we just pump the water into the camper with the RV pump. I was asked about showers. Really don't understand how you take showers. You always look clean, but I don't see how that's possible. How can you possibly be clean? Well, yeah, we take showers. I mean, I take a shower every day now. Now that we have unlimited water, I take a lot of showers. When I was a nomad, it would take, I'd take a shower about every three days, and I hated that. I like my showers. I have a propane on-demand water heater. They're $100. You can find them on Amazon. Mine's a Mar Mary or Mare or something like that. It's really easy to work. You just hook your RV pump right to it. When it senses pressure, uh, it has this little electric t -t 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 -t, and it lights the propane flame. It instantly heats the water, and when you shut the water off, the flame goes off so it only heats the water that you use very efficient and so we take a shower inside the camper the shower water specifically we dump onto our garden now that now that we have a garden and so it, we only use biodegradable soap just so you know ivory soap is biodegradable completely natural we looked up the regulations here in our county of course you can dump out uh, shower water onto your garden they actually encourage it that way you're not using a lot of water and wasting water and I don't know. So I, I think they're specifically talking about city water because the well water wouldn't make any difference. Now the air conditioner. The air conditioner is actually a really good question. I've talked about the air conditioner quite a bit, but now that we've actually hit the really hot temperatures, the other day it got up to 95 degrees. It was probably 75 to 80 percent humidity, so it was, it was significantly hot. And the air conditioner really struggled to keep up with the sun beating down on it. So, how did it perform off solar panels? It, it did very well. So I don't turn the air conditioner on until about 11 o'clock. And this is the key to air conditioning. Just like everything else in your life, when you live off grid in a tiny house, you have to minimize everything you do. Well, you gotta minimize air conditioning too. You only need it when you're really hot. Now, I know when you live in a house, you have the air conditioner on all the time, you know, 72, 73, I don't know, degrees. Well. We turn ours on about 79 degrees, turn it on about 11 o'clock. So by 11 o'clock, the batteries are completely charged from the solar panels. So all the energy that we used overnight, now the batteries are charged. So at 11 o'clock, I turn the air conditioner on. So it doesn't really use a lot of energy from the batteries. It does start to suck into the batteries now. It's getting really hot. What happens is the solar panels, 
lose about 10% efficiency for every 10 degrees over its manufacturing temperature. Its manufacturing temperature, I think, is around 70, I think, 8 degrees. So at 88 degrees, it loses 10% of efficiency. At 98 degrees, it loses another 10% efficiency. That means a 100 watt panel now is only making 80 watts. So you lose a lot of energy the hotter it gets outside. About two o'clock, I start to notice that it's, the solar panels are no longer keeping up. So that means it's starting to take energy from the batteries. But that's okay. We knew that was gonna happen. So by, by 3.30, I decided that I'm going to disconnect from the solar panels and hook up to the generator. Now these are only extremely hot days. If it doesn't get up to 90 degrees, let's say it only gets you know 85 degrees, we can stay on the solar panels. But I'm talking when we're up into the 90s and the 100 degree mark, I'm gonna have to rely on the generator a little bit. So about 3.30, 4 o'clock, I switch over to the generator. I let the solar panels then charge the batteries back up because it's depleted the batteries. And then about eight o'clock, I shut off the generator because now it's starting to cool off again to a temperature that we can deal with. And the other thing is, is during the morning from about eight o'clock to, well, about 11 o'clock, noon, somewhere around there, we're outside working anyways. So having an air conditioner running during the morning doesn't make any sense. Now, Carolyn starts cooking around three o'clock. She'll cook supper. So that's when we really got to have the air conditioner on. Otherwise, we just cook ourselves out of the camper. We have 800 watts of solar panels. That is keeping up with our 5,000 BTU air conditioner. Now, the way these air conditioners work, I have discovered, is when it first starts up, it only uses about 400 watts, maybe for the first hour. And then the second hour, it goes up to 500 watts. And I don't, I don't know why, but apparently the cooler the temperature is in that camper, the more energy it uses. About the third hour, it starts using 600 watts. So now I'm starting to see that between the temperature outside being up there in the 90s and us having 600 watts, the solar panels are starting to struggle. Now, later, we intend to get more solar panels. So this probably will all work out in our future. But right now, I'm quite content. I mean, absolutely content that we have air conditioning. It's not costing us very much to run. Our generator uses about a gallon of gas every 11 hours. So you figure we're only running it four hours a day. That's going to give us about three days on a gallon of gas running the air conditioner. So a gallon is what, $1.65 every three days. I mean, this is incredibly cheap. Now, one of the comments I get every day, 10 or 20 times a day, is you need to get, you need to buy. Basically the same type of thing. Dot, dot, dot. You fill in the blank, whatever you want to call it. I mean, the other day I was talking about how I made some coffee can shin covers so snakes wouldn't bite my shins as I'm walking through the woods. It was free. These coffee cans were free. We had them laying around. We buy coffee and we drink the coffee. The coffee is in our budget, but the cans are free. And so we always tried to figure out what we can do with coffee cans. And so I made these coffee can shin covers. And I didn't understand it because in this particular video, I even said I was trying to figure out how to do something without spending a lot of money. And people inevitably say, well, you need to buy. You need to buy snake boots. And I have a hard time understanding why so many folks think I need to buy things. Considering I've been on YouTube for three years now, and I would say at least once a month, I talk about my budget. My budget is my budget. It is, it is you gotta think of it as it's stuck in stone. There is absolutely no way around the budget in my life before everybody says oh well you need to learn how to make more money this isn't about making more money i make more a lot more money than i put into my budget my budget is eight hundred dollars a month i'm actually thinking about reducing my budget down to five hundred dollars a month because all the extra money i make goes into savings this is just who i am you can call me a cheapy or a cheapskate or you know whatever names you want to call me uh, i don't see how name calling helps anything but this is my life this is how i do things I am trying to back down into a primitive lifestyle, a more basic lifestyle. And you got to think about back how our grandparents and parents living in the depression, they had to think about how things were made and how to do things without going to spend the money because they didn't have any money to spend. And so that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around is how can I keep from going out and spend anything? Now, for three years I've been on YouTube, I've talked about we don't, we don't violate our budget. Occasionally we accidentally go over, in which case next month we go under budget just so we can 
you know, over the two month average, we don't haven't went over budget. Well, now that we're here and we're building our tiny house and we're having to get things for the property, we're even more particular about our budget because we want to make sure that we can build the tiny house or that we can buy the chainsaw or, or buy the log splitter or whatever it is that we need to buy for the property or to build our house. We want to make sure that that's in the budget. So going out and buying a pair of boots, guarantee you, it's not in the budget. And I hate to be rude, but there's absolutely no reason to tell me to go buy something or send me an email with a hundred different links telling me that, that we need this or need that. I've gotten emails where people will tell me these are things that they are suggesting that I buy. So I hope that answers your questions and comments. I hope I can inspire you to achieve your dreams and live minimalistically because it's such a rewarding lifestyle when you can figure out how to do things yourself. Thanks for watching.